Bonjour, je suis Sylvain Gillier et je voulais vous souhaiter la bienvenue pour cette édition 2023 du sommet en ligne Chevaux Médiateurs, Chevaux Guérisseurs. Aujourd'hui, je voudrais vous dire que je suis super heureux. Je suis super heureux parce que je crois profondément que les chevaux appellent les humains. Et ça fait depuis plus de 15 000 ans, il y a cet appel des chevaux. Et je suis heureux aussi parce que vous, vous l'avez entendu. Il y a plus de 1 millier d'inscriptions pour notre édition 2023 du Sommet en ligne. Une vingtaine d'intervenantes et d'intervenants pour témoigner de la diversité du panorama de la médiation avec les chevaux et donc trois journées d'interview euh, les 12, 13, 14 décembre et euh, une ouverture le 11 décembre, clôture du sommet le 15 décembre en soirée. Euh, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vous avez la possibilité d'échanger en direct avec les intervenantes et les intervenants. Euh, je suis heureux aussi parce que chaque moment que j'ai passé à rencontrer les intervenantes à ce sommet a été précieux. Chaque moment avec les chevaux, c'est un moment précieux. Et j'ai vraiment de la gratitude que nous puissions entendre, que nous puissions comprendre les enseignements des chevaux. Ce sommet... Il a été réalisé entièrement par une équipe de bénévoles. Il est diffusé entièrement gratuitement. Ça fait plusieurs centaines d'heures de travail. Alors, si vous souhaitiez soutenir notre travail, les projets de cheval en conscience, euh, les chevaux médiateurs, les chevaux guérisseurs, euh, eh bien, il y a une possibilité de donner à l'association Cheval Communication sur le lien Eloasso qui se trouve en dessous de cette vidéo. Donc, euh, merci au fond du fond du cœur. Merci. Merci à toutes nos intervenantes, à nos intervenants. Merci pour vos témoignages et pour votre relation unique avec les chevaux. Et donc aujourd'hui, donc mardi 12 décembre, c'est une journée thématique. On voudrait répondre à la question avec le cheval. Est-ce qu'il y a une liberté sans limite Et donc pour répondre à cette question, nous avons plusieurs invités. Arlette Agassi, qui est équipe pédagogue. Blandine Valois de Six pieds sur terre, Alexandra Bilisco qui viendra nous parler de son lieu ressource, la légende de Tara, Sophie Peignier qui est coach, médiatrice avec les chevaux et qui représente également le syndicat de, des professionnels de la médiation équine et euh, quelqu'un qu'on ne présente plus, Hélène Roche donc, qui est éthologue professionnelle avec les chevaux. Nous avons aussi une invitée surprise que j'ai rencontrée euh, il y a à peu près deux semaines euh, chez elle, aux États-Unis, en Arizona, qui viendra nous parler de son projet euh, où il y a un troupeau de à peu près 300 chevaux qui sont euh, gardés dans leur milieu naturel, en liberté. Donc, Simone nous parlera de ce projet. Rejoignez-nous également à 19h ce soir, donc mardi 12 décembre, pour euh, des questions-réponses en direct avec les intervenantes de cette journée. Donc, il y a un lien Zoom si vous voulez participer à ces échanges questions-réponses en direct. Hey, hello Simon, so very honored to uh, welcome you for this uh, interview and uh, we are right here at the, the Salt River. And uh, I understand, Simone, you are the president of the Salt River Well Horse Association. So um, could you please tell us what, what is the, the, the Salt River Well Horse Association and what you are doing with Well Horse? Sure, yeah. It's actually the Salt River Wild Horse Management Group. Um, so, yeah, my name is Simone in Netherlands. I'm the president of the Salt River Wild Horse Management Group. And um, we manage the Salt River Wild Horses. We manage them humanely mm -hmm. so that they have a legal right to live here. And we started a very long time ago to document all of the horses and to make sure that we had a full database of every horse mm -hmm. that had ever been born on the river. Well, then at a certain point, the Forest Service wanted to remove all of the horses. Oh, really? And of course, oh. that was going to just really hurt all of us as well as the public who loves them so what we did at that point was we made a lot of rallies and we actually hired attorneys and oh. we um 
we had a lot of meetings and we negotiated and then we rallied some more and then we had some more protests and we negotiated some more and so because we uh, sent out a proposal of how you can manage wild horses humanely, eventually, hmm. with the voices all the people gave to these horses, hmm. the Forest Service then said, okay, let's, let's negotiate and make a deal. And That's the deal that crazy. we made at that time was that the horses couldn't outgrow their boundaries. So we had to, um, uh, we, we presented a way to use birth control that was very humane, mm -hmm. that had to be administered with darts so you didn't have to catch horses for it. Okay. And But at the same time, the horses wouldn't grow out of control. They wouldn't be able to grow out of their boundaries because mm -hmm. this is a big city, a lot of civilization. Yes, May maybe and I should say for yeah. those who don't know exactly where we are, that, that okay. we are not far from the big city of Phoenix in Arizona, which We're is a very, very big city. 20 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a major, major hustle and bustle of the big city um, mm. all around the horses. And so basically what happened, right, is, is hundreds of years ago when uh, the explorers came to America, they left horses behind, right? And that's 500 years ago. So from those horses that were left behind, they thrived and they had lots of foals. And around, you know, the 1930s, there was millions of wild horses in America. Just like all the bison were roaming the fields, the wild horses were roaming everywhere as well. So wild horses have mm. been here uh, in America for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Actually, they evolved on the North American continent. Mm. So these wild horses were here before Americans ever started living here, right? Yeah. So it's a very important historic aspect that we want to preserve. But of course, we love and care about the wild horses and therefore we gave it our all to try to save them. So we, we sued the government, we negotiated with them, we had lots of rallies and protests, and, mm -hmm. and in the end, um, the Forest Service listened, and they said, mm -hmm. okay, how can you manage these horses? So we said, we will manage them mm -hmm. with um, the help of public funds. We don't get any grants, no one yes. gives us any money, so it's only the public. Right. who is managing these horses and so we use humane fertility control so that the population does not get um, you know out doesn't grow too fast sure. so we've stabilized the population with humane birth control darts and that's the reason that the Salt River wild horses are still here today <laughs> actually who owns the, the land because I'm, I'm hearing that you got up like 20,000 acres is that yes. Is that right? Yes, there are 20,000 acres, um, and this is Forest Service land. So okay. it's, the, it's the United States Forest Service that owns this land, and it's called public lands. Yeah. And that means that it's here for the enjoyment of the public. It's all technically right. owned by all of the public of America, and yeah. therefore, hmm. it was the public of America who gave these horses a voice, which is actually amazing, right? We need to give animals their voice by really standing up for them and that's what what the public of arizona did and you know while they were so close to being gone forever mm -hmm. it would have been terrible you know so close to being gone forever they're still here today because they had us a group of strong dedicated people standing mm -hmm. up for them and when we rang that alarm bell, all of the public responded and mm. said, no, we will not stand for the removal of the horses. Wow. And that's why they're still here today. Yeah, that's just beautiful. And um, I heard of a story in uh, Alpine. Yes. And um, I heard that the horses were, were kind of yeah. removed there. Yeah, actually. so Alpine is also in Arizona. Yeah. But it's a very small town. And uh -huh. there weren't a lot of people to give a big voice to these horses. So the Forest Service there in Alpine, it's a different Forest Service, they removed all the Alpine wild horses. Oh. And it's just terrible because these horses have been there for hundreds of years. It's a beautiful forest. Yeah. 
but yet the horses are not allowed to live there you know they want the forest for the cows for the grazing they want the forest for hunting they <laughs> want it for timber and logging everything that makes money right that's yes. what they want the forest for mm -hmm. so it's to the detriment of the horses that they're not making anyone any money and yes. it's just very sad that that it's all about greed really when it should be all about preserving nature the way it is absolutely you yeah know? absolutely for you what what is the the most important thing uh, to to preserve this mm -hmm. environment and i mean the environment with yeah. the wild horses that yeah. kind of belong to this mm -hmm. country and to this environment what, what yeah. would be the most important for you well the most important thing for us is to preserve this beautiful resource for the people, for the future, right? Mm -hmm. The way we can still see wild horses here today, they're like a living remnant, remnant of our, the pioneering history of Arizona, right? People love to come here and watch these horses just being peaceful, you know, in their beautiful herd dynamics and their families. And it gives people a lot of peace and tranquility to just sit here and watch them. And that's what we're trying to preserve for our future generations of, hmm. of tourists yeah. here to come and see what wonderful animals they are and, and how special and how much love there is within them taking care of their families. And um, it's also very important because it's so historic. Right? Yes, you don't yeah. want to ruin this beautiful historic resource. Why would you want to do that? Um, they're also very important ecologically for this area because um, they help reduce the fire danger. Oh, which really? It's really high here in Arizona because it gets course. very hot and there's a lot of weeds and kindle out there. Okay. And they also help by pooping out the seeds of the trees that oh. live here. So the trees that thrive here are uh, acacia and mesquite trees basically the same tree mm -hmm. well the horses eat the beans then they poop them out and the little mesquite trees then have a nice little fertilization bed to grow in and mm -hmm. so the horses help cultivate these beautiful forests that the birds and all the other wild animals live in so you're saying that the horse actually is part of the uh, cycle of the part life of here? The, uh, the horse the wild horse is part of the entire natural ecosystem here. Okay. Yep. Wow. That's yeah, absolutely so very important beautiful. Observe. We were here with, with a group and we were so lucky to, to be with some of those wild horses by the river. Yeah. And um, and it's so tranquil. It's so yeah. calm. And um, they give this amazing peace and calmness when you watch them and when you just see how they live their lives naturally you know um, surviving all of the odds surviving you know mountain lions and and heat and food shortages and they're just amazing to watch mm. yeah thank you so much and maybe a, a last question is is a did, did you learn something personally from being with them, with, with the wild horses, from observing them? I, I think all of humanity can learn from wild horses, from how much love they have, how they take care of their families. Uh -huh. um, you know, wild horses mean so much to people because wild horses care about what we care about. And what okay. do we care about? Family mm -hmm. and freedom, right? Those are almost the two single most important things in life. And wild horses represent those. And when we look at them, we, we see how peaceful life can be if you just take care of each other. Simone, thank you very much for being uh, with us today and talking about the wonderful uh, wild uh, horses here in, in Salt River. and. and mm -hmm. Uh, I think you, all your efforts are absolutely fantastic and um, it you. could be uh, actually done in, in probably in many places here yeah, in, in let the me States. Say, let me say something about that. So the way that we preserve the Salt River wild horses and how we're managing them humanely is actually a pretty big job. We have over a hundred volunteers Okay. and um, we make sure that all of the fences 
get repaired and maintained so horses yes. don't get on the road. Mm -hmm. We actually help them cross the road even at a horse crossing. We rescue them when there is yeah. a horse that needs to be rescued with an orphan or a broken leg or, you mm -hmm. know, we rescue them. So we have a facility for that. Um, and we dart them with the fertility control. And that has to be done on a weekly basis because there are always different mares that will need to be done because they need to be darted once per year okay. and then the mare will not have a baby for one year. And it's mm -hmm. a completely beautiful birth control because mm -hmm. if ever the herd died off, it could be reversed. You just mm -hmm. don't dart them okay. and then they'll have a baby the next year. Oh yeah. So, and it's not painful. It's just like, boom, it's like a bee sting and they do mm -hmm. a hop, skip and a jump and they won't have a baby for one year. So while it's okay. a lot of work, it really helps because it makes them able to live their lives peacefully mm. here. And so this can be duplicated in many other areas where wild mm. horses live. Yeah. You know, why would you let them have too many babies and then the government just goes and they just get rid of them and yeah. they stuff them in holding pens. And sometimes right. they end up in slaughterhouses in Mexico. It's yeah. absolutely horrific. Yeah. So. So why not give them the fertility control that doesn't hurt them mm. so that they can stay in their environment, the people can still watch them for years and years to come, mm. and the horses can live peacefully the way they were meant to do. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let me say one, one more, if, oh, if, sure. if you don't mind, because sure. you're going to put the link to our website, Yes, right? sure, okay. absolutely, yeah. Okay. We, we're going to put the link to yeah. the Salt River okay, Management great. Group, absolutely, yes. Okay. So, so the Salt River Wild Horse Management Group has a website where you can learn a lot about wild horses. And of course, you can also sponsor a Salt River Wild Horse there or buy a bale of hay for them when nature doesn't provide here in Arizona. We actually feed them in feed stations to make sure that they don't get too skinny. So it's a full mm -hmm. overall management and still these horses get to maintain wild and free for all of the public to see. So we hope you yes. will support us. And that's directly on the, the Salt River uh, Wild Horse Management Group website, yeah. right? Yep, you can sponsor a horse there. You can mm -hmm. learn about the lawsuit that's currently going on. All right. Um, yeah, you could learn all about us there. Okay, so the link will be just uh, below this interview. Thank you very much, Simone. Thank you. I appreciate what you do uh, because that's very important also. It's wonderful. And I, I sincerely hope that uh, your voice will be heard and it's also the voice of the of the horses, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this uh, wonderful initiative world. could be replicated in many places. Yes, sure. it sure is better than spending all that money on rounding them up and stuffing them in facilities. You know, it's, it's much better to... Um, to treat them humanely and let the public still enjoy them. Thank you. So we're going to enjoy this beautiful day. By, I know, by the isn't river. it beautiful? <laughs> Look at it. It's awesome. Thank you, Simone. Thank you.